Our gathering song can be found in Gather, number 886, Immaculate Mary, number 886. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, good <laughs> afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. And welcome today as we place our Lord at the center of our day today, celebrating a Holy Mass for the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Friends, today we celebrate good news that God has a saving plan, that Mary had an important role in that plan in each of us as well. As we come to renew the font of grace through this sacrament of this Holy Eucharist in our own lives, let us begin first by pausing to call to mind our sins so that we might worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray.
us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you prepared her, preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman who you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wondrous deeds. Whose right hand has won the victory for us, God's holy Justice revealed to all, remembering kindness and faithfulness to Israel. Sing 
to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. All of the ends of earth have seen salvation by our God. Joyfully sing out all you lands, break forth in song. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done wonderful deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God done wonderful deeds. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one, who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, who we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for she who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. I welcome everyone, especially those who may be visiting us for this Mass today. As I look around, I see... Somebody may be in your pew. That's a joke. You know, you all sit in the same place on Sunday. Someone's sitting there today, which is great. Today's feast gives us much to celebrate. I, I love the feast of our Blessed Mother because she always points us to Christ. And, and of course, today, the Immaculate Conception is special for us as Americans, because it is our national patronal feast. So today we pray especially for our country. We may be devoted to our Lord and to our Lady. This feast, of course, is all the feasts are about Jesus, and this one through Mary. And the essence of this great feast, however, of Mary's Immaculate Conception, is that God has a plan. God has a plan. Sometimes we, huh, we, we talk to God in prayer. We say, Lord, I don't understand. What's the plan for my life? I'm going through this thing. And today's feast reminds us that from the very moment after the fall of our first parents, that we heard today in the book of Genesis, until the book of Revelation, when all things are in all, for everything in between, God has a plan, a plan to restore our fallen nature to the life with the Father that was in the beginning. At Christmas, of course, in a few weeks, we celebrate that God's plan was beginning to be realized in actuality, the arrival of the long-awaited Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. In this time of Advent, we use to prepare our hearts to make an appropriate dwelling in our hearts for such an awesome gift. How awesome that friendship with God is restored. That, in fact, the, the life of God Himself comes into our hearts once more, not only at Christmas, but even here at this Holy Eucharist. So that we could never say God did not know what it was like and He has come to our level to redeem even the brokennesses of our lives and lead us home. How awesome. Today we celebrate not only that God has a plan, but it's this feast of our Blessed Mother that, that Mary, who Jesus gives also as our mother, has a special role in the Father's plan. Mary, before she was even born was chosen by God to be the mother of his son, Jesus. 
And the church says that that special role of uniting humanity and divinity required something special of her, and so she was immaculately conceived, conceived without any stain of sin. That that mark that we all bear, the rest of us, since the first fall we heard today, she did not have. This was to prepare her for this special mission. So today's feast, in a sense, heralds that, that, that the guilt, the great chasm that exists between God and man from the fall is coming to an end. Because God chooses this woman, this lowly woman, to be the mother of her son, the mother of God. Today's gospel we heard, indeed, she was full of grace. That God wanted to prepare her for the coming of his son. And since God was holy, his mother also had to be holy. God chose her. But you know what else we heard in the gospel today? God always respects our free will. He has a marvelous plan. But time and again, don't we also have to say, yes, Lord, I surrender my life to your plan. I want to do what you want, not what I want. And so we see in the gospel today at the Annunciation, God waits. If you can imagine, the God of the universe waits on the yes of his creature to bring his plan into fulfillment. Mary, in today's gospel, makes her response. She says, yes. Adam and Eve in the first reading were tricked by the evil one that they could be like God. So they said, we don't need you. Their disobedience spoiled the rest of creation. But Mary, through her yes, through her obedience, put into motion God's saving plan. The fathers of the church used to say, death through Eve, life through Mary. If you go to our national shrine, it's, it's written above the doorway. And through Mary's, yes, that first time, it wasn't, however, the only time. Even though she was immaculately conceived, it could not have been easy. She said yes to God again and again, each and every day. There was a whole lot of uncertainty a pregnant, unwed teenager. I listened to a podcast about Advent and the Scriptures and said how the, the things she must have had to endure in the gossip of her small town. But she said yes. That's why we celebrate her as the best disciple, the first disciple, who teaches us to say yes to God's will, to do whatever he tells us, and in sorrowful times at the foot of the cross, to stand faithfully. But Jesus, friends, was not born just in Mary. He's also born in each of our hearts, isn't he? We too, from the moment of our baptism, have chosen by have been chosen by God, St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Ephesians, to bring his presence into the world, to be holy and blameless, predestined for adoption. God has loved and chosen each and every single one of us, every single one of you, to be his disciples. God, who never recants on his unconditional love, what Mary became awaits us. And that, my friends, is part of this great truth of this feast that we are destined for glory, though we're not immaculately conceived. And we all know that, don't we? We experience the effects of the fall with the three wounds that theologians tell us, a darkened intellect, a weakened will, an inclination towards sin or concupiscence, as well as death and suffering, Though we experience these things, we know that they don't have the last word. Thanks to Mary's yes and Jesus coming and redeeming even our brokenness, we are made whole. 
we too are overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit through the life of grace, through the sacraments, that we, like Mary, might make Jesus present in the world. Dear friends, let us not be afraid with Mary to say yes, to welcome Jesus into our hearts this Advent as Mary did, to allow the Holy Spirit, to invite the Holy Spirit to overshadow us, mindful in the words of Elizabeth that nothing is impossible for God, mindful that God has chosen you and me and each of us from the foundation of the world to be his disciple. Think about that today. This Advent, let us not be afraid to welcome Jesus into every part of our lives, our faith, which enriches all of it, every corner of our lives, every nook and cranny, and there we will find meaning and purpose, direction and strength, and the peace the world cannot give. Mary Immaculate is our best teacher and our guide who points us to her son. May we follow her example with our lives and always welcome and point him out as well. Amen. Grateful that God has a plan for our redemption, the church invites us today to press, profess the faith we share. Today we'll pray the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 10 in your breaking bread with the Lamb. Page 10. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And now with confidence and faith, let us entrust our needs, prayers, and petitions to Jesus through Mary. Please respond, Come, Lord Jesus. For all members of the church, may God help us grow in holiness and be a light that leads many souls to salvation let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. For leaders in government, may God strengthen them in their efforts to protect all life from conception until natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord Jesus. For expectant mothers, may God's grace be poured out upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord Jesus. For the community gathered here, may God heal us of all that might separate us from his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For all who have died marked with the sign of Christ's love, may they rest in the perfect communion of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Today as we celebrate our national patronal feast, let us pray for our country, our people, our leaders, that we might be faithful to following the way of the Lord Jesus. In the intercession of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all those who have died, especially Mary Jane and Bill Wilson, may they, join, may they enjoy eternal peace and happiness before the throne of God. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Gracious Father, hear these petitions we, your children, make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song during the presentation of gifts can be found in Gather, number 889, 
Hail Mary, Gentle Woman, number Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her, on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth the son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all to be for your people an advocate of grace, and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. <laughs> Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, blessed Alan de la Roche, blessed Pius IX, blessed Don Scotus, St. Agnes of Rome, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord. If you should enter any of my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary, for from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our Lord. Our communion song is the Magnificat.
let us continue in gather number 895, O Most Holy One, number 895. <clears throat> May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you all so much for joining us for Holy Mass today, midday. Um, it seems we made this change at this time. It seems to be a hit. Uh, but what we need for the noon mass to continue on holy days is some additional folks to sign up. We've kind of been pinch hitting with ministers. So if you like this time and you think that would be good, please contact Marty to say, hey, I'll be an usher. I'll be an extraordinary minister. We especially could use a sacristan so poor Carol doesn't have to pull double duty. Uh, so if you'd like to learn the sacristan, even if it's just for the Holy Day Mass, that would be a big help, or even singing as well. Altar service. <laughs> Today is traditionally the day to set up your nativity sets. So you may want to carve out some time and prayerfully do that as a family activity today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day <laughs> carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
from Gather, let us go forth singing number 879, Hail Holy Queen, number 879. Tells of your praises free. 